Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We are so glad you joined us this morning. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. Our Be the Change initiative continues today as we focus on our children's safety, taking a proactive approach to educating you parents about the dangers of abduction. Honeywell and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children are combining efforts both in and out of schools to help families, and we're going to show you how. Plus, powerful wealth-building tools, learning how to maximize the value of your life insurance policy. That and much more right now on The Balancing Act. It's a parent's worst nightmare. Your child is missing. They've been abducted and you have no clue where they are. Last year, law enforcement in the U.S. received more than 460,000 reports of missing children. So what can we as parents do to prevent abduction and help protect our kids? Well, joining us for today's Be the Change is Callahan Walsh from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and Carrie Kennedy, director of Honeywell Hometown Solutions, Honeywell's corporate citizenship initiative. And they're here to talk about Kid Smarts and how it's keeping our kids safer. Welcome. Thank so great you. to have you here. Such an important us. topic. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Callahan, I want to turn to you. Your dad, John Walsh, and your mom founded the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in 1984. That's you've done remarkable work. I want to talk about your mission and how having a corporate, you know, partner like Honeywell really, really helps. Mm -hmm. Well, since the uh, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children was founded in '84 by my parents, as you said, we've actually helped recover over 200,000 missing children. Wow. We serve uh, as a safety net for families who are dealing with those types of issues and as a support to law enforcement who are working those types of cases. Uh, and prevention is really at our heart and we yeah. wish these kids never went missing in the first place. So Kids March is a really big part of that. Uh, it's a great program, um, but it really wouldn't be around and we couldn't do it without the great partners that we have at Honeywell and their employees that really champion our cause and adopt our mission as their own uh, that allows us to create this great child safety resource to deliver to families and educators across the country that helps keep kids safe. Carrie, when it comes to abduction prevention, there's some really important rules that we should all know, right? Right, right. so Kids Marts is based on four rules of safety. Check first, okay. check with an adult before going anywhere, take a friend, always take so a friend. So important, take a friend. Absolutely, the buddy system, very important. Tell people no. We want children to be empowered. Tell people no. That's so, I love the word no. It's strong and kids need to know they can say it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And then tell a trusted adult. So we want children to feel comfortable. If they feel sad, scared, or confused, to be able to talk to an adult they trust. Carrie, I'm the mother of uh, you know uh, two girls. One's 15, one's 11. How can I really communicate to them about the importance of you know being proactive, staying safe, being aware? Through the generous donations of our employees, we created KidSmarts, a free personal safety resource to teach kids K through five. Um, and educate teachers, law enforcement, and parents about abduction prevention. And it's empowering children to understand the potential dangers and how to respond to them. Great. And Callahan, tell me about the strategies that KidSmarts is using. And, and tell me about the singing and dancing in the beginning. I, I love that. How does that fit in? Well, it, it's really important, especially teaching young children personal safety, to not scare or overwhelm them. So the KidSmarts program uses simple messaging that allows kids, it's easy for them to not only understand it, but easy for them to remember as well. And the singing and dancing that you saw as part of our safety dance, which is another fun, engaging way to oh, teach break it out right now. Go ahead. <laughs> it, it, again, it's just it's another fun, exciting way to teach kids the four rules of personal safety, as Carrie mentioned, and which is really at the heart of the Kids Smarts program. Now, Callahan, should we recommend the 
kicking and screaming uh, tactic. I mean, I've heard about that, and, and would you recommend that for abduction when kids are, you know, threatened? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've been analyzing attempted abductions at the National Center for over a decade, and what we were able to determine was when kids were able to get away, 83% of the time, it was because of something proactive that they did, the kicking and screaming that you mentioned wow. or pulling away. Yeah. So Kid Smarts actually takes it a step above. We want kids to be able to not only identify that these risky situations, but be able to avoid them as well. All right, and Carrie, how can KidSmart be helpful for teachers? We've made it as easy as possible for teachers to access online resources such as the KidSmart's Educational Safety Kit. And Honeywell and its employees are committed to keeping kids safe. And our goal is to have KidSmart's taught in every single elementary school in the United States. Great. Callahan, where can our viewers go to find out more? The KidSmarts program and all of its resources are available for download at kidsmarts.org and you can check us out on Facebook and Twitter as well. You know, I just want to thank you both so much for being here, for empowering myself, other parents, teachers, kids, families. I mean, you're just doing remarkable work and it was great having you in the studio. Thank you for having us. And for additional insights and other corporate citizen initiatives like Honeywell Hometown Solutions, be sure to visit us at thebalancingact.com or share your input and questions by logging on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. Wealth planning, it's vital for retirement and just everyday living, but for many it takes a backseat to meeting our daily needs, personal and family. Waiting to plan is really not the best option. With us today discussing how he was able to leverage his life insurance and meet his retirement planning needs is this wonderful individual, Jerry Fallick, a retired life insurance agent and his beautiful wife, Rona. Thank you. Thank you for being us here. On you know, the show. Before we talk about such great information that we have today, I do want to share with my viewers, if you don't mind, Jerry and Rona have been married for 60 years. That is amazing. Congratulations, Rona. I have Thank to you. ask you. How? What do we do to aspire to this? You don't argue. A perfect soundbite. And do. I'm bigger than him. <laughs> <laughs> would you agree, Jerry? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> 60 years, and I'm sure you would do it all over again. We certainly would. We certainly would. I want to be like you two. I've been married 13 years, so hopefully I'll get there too with my husband, Jose. Um, and you know, I wanted to talk to our viewers about this because, you know, you're fit, you're healthy, you have a long marriage, you've enjoyed a wonderful life. And this is where we come in to talk about how people really aren't either enjoying life and not planning for life today. Right, Jerry? They're right. not really getting ready for what's to come in the future. Right. Well, they, they didn't plan 52 years ago when I came into the business. No. And that's what I want to talk about, because you have been in the business of insurance, and I read here, for 52 years. Mm -hmm. right. That's amazing. Would you say, uh, as part of wealth planning, Jerry, are men and women getting um, the maximum benefit from the insurance? No. No, from life insurance, I should from say. From life insurance, absolutely not. Why not? not. Tell well, me why. Um, so many new innovations have uh, taken place mm -hmm. since the 52 years ago. You know, that was a long time, and there was no such thing at that time called life settlements. Have you ever heard of it? I've heard of it briefly. You know, you only understand what a life insurance company tells you mm -hmm. about your policy but they never mention the fact that you have an option to sell your policy mm -hmm. or a portion of it. Life settlements offer you the option of getting a cash settlement for a policy instead of just letting it lapse or just letting it go away if you can't afford it. In our particular case, we sold it to GWG. So you sold your two life insurance policies. Now, how did that benefit you because I Personally, I didn't even know that was possible. Well, how did it benefit us? Sure. It brought in a large sum of okay. cash. And why did you decide to do something like this? We what happened, Rona? We just did not need the policies anymore. You didn't need the policies no, anymore? No, they're just the two of us. Oh. And, and Jerry uh, was retired. So we had this nice nest egg. Mm -hmm. And uh, before I left the business, I had heard about GWG, but their growth has been phenomenal. And so when the time came, I knew to turn to them. 
which to me, from what I'm hearing, Rona, it sounds like something that would not only benefit because you got cash in your pocket, let's right. say, but uh, almost like a alleviation of many, maybe burdens, uh, health issues. I mean, I know you're healthy, but cer certain things can happen. Well, you know, anybody can use more money. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're right. It alleviated concerns over health and right. uh, what else we do? Everything, die? everything. Don't you feel just, uh, I mean, don't you feel unburdened now that we made that transaction? Absolutely. And how has it benefited your life, Rona? What have you done that you weren't able to do, for example? I have stopped worrying about Jerry. I mean, we live in a beautiful community, and if we need assistance, I call downstairs, uh, an aide will come up and help us. Excellent. And we've got, you know, all the all the cash and the assets we need. And right. you're able to travel more, maybe? Oh, yes. You know, we lived in Paris for quite some time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we'll make another trip or right. two before it's all over. Peace of mind, it sounds like to me. Peace of mind. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Give me the 60 kiss. years. I want to see a kiss. kiss between both of you. <laughs> <laughs> God bless both of you. Thank you so much for Thank your time. You so much, Thank you so much. Wishing you another 10, 20, and maybe even 30 more years. Thank you, darling. Thank you. And if you want to learn more about these life settlements, again, they're called life settlements, you can go to gwglife.com. That's gwglife.com. And of course, as always, visit us at thebalancingact.com for additional wealth planning insights. And as always, get social. Share with us your questions by logging on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. You two are my idol. From me, tell me, Amy, why do you still insist on coming knocking on my door when you know how just the Amy that 36 year old Dylan Duncan writes and sings about is not a love that was lost. Amy is short for amyloidosis, as in transthyretin mediated amyloidosis, or ATTR, a rare debilitating disease which he inherited and is now battling. In this Behind the Mystery Rare and Genetic segment, we'll examine this metabolic disease. The Balancing Act's Christopher Cox traveled to Boston for some insight from Dr. John Burke, Associate Professor of Medicine at Boston University and Clinical Director of its Amyloidosis Center. And that's where we also met Dylan Duncan. Dylan Duncan is a songwriter and musician. He's also one of 50,000 patients impacted by transthyretin mediated amyloidosis, or ATTR. I went in for my genetic testing at the age of 26. Um, and so I found out I had the gene for um, the disease. And a year later, I went in and got a fat pad biopsy, which was then determined, uh, that, which was used to determine whether or not symptoms had started. Dylan Duncan has been John Burke's patient for nearly eight years. They know each other well. Uh, we met first in 2007, and at the time uh, he was, I think, 27 years old. Uh, he had watched his mother become ill and uh, undergo a liver transplant and subsequently die. Disease symptoms may vary dramatically. Imagine having various symptoms of the disease, yet doctors are unable to find the cause of your specific condition. ATTR is a hereditary disease uh, that um, culminates in injury to nerves in particular and secondarily to the heart. Dylan was 27 when he was diagnosed, but for him, it came as no surprise. How old was your mother when she was actually diagnosed? I want to say um, 37, 38. I know she was sick for about five years, and she passed away when she was 45. The abnormal gene is passed from a parent to the patient. And uh, it's approximately a 50-50 proposition every time an affected parent has the child. My grandfather had lost his wife to the disease, and um, so he, he knew very well how dangerous it was. As his two daughters you know, became sick, he was just very aware of the need for both my sister and I to get tested for amyloidosis. And so when I was 26 and I called him up and told him that I received a positive diagnosis of having the gene, he cried. He was, he was very emotional about it. Doctor, what are the symptoms of ATTR? People will typically develop some burning, tingling, or numbness initially of their toes 
Um, and there is evolution uh, up the leg till they reach approximately knee involvement, at which point their fingertips and hands become involved. There can also be um, remarkable dysfunction of the GI tract so that diarrhea or profound constipation can be uh, problematic. Back when I was like really worried about symptoms um, showing up, I was, you know, I would be in the shower and I would, I would put my leg in the, sh in the hot water to see if I could feel it. So some days if I wasn't feeling anything in my legs, um, I didn't know. But that's what sent me off into, into figuring out, you know, whether or not I had it or not. First symptoms that I was experiencing of amyloidosis were the carpal tunnel, which is that what they say I think one in four patients experience. But it was very strange, like I, I would feel like a complete numbness in my entire arm and I'd have to hang my arm over the bed and just get the feeling back. And that happened around 26, 27, that's why I went in to get tested. Things were starting to develop with my you know, gastrointestinal um, issues and, and, and numbness in my, and more in my calves I was experiencing. I, you know, and I've, I've heard that a lot of the numbness will happen kind of starting in the feet um, and going upwards. There's some competing diagnoses, ones that uh, have very similar um, symptom complex. And as a consequence, um, neurologists will turn to those diagnoses without considering amyloid. While currently there are no drugs specifically approved for ATTR in the United States, there are limited treatment options. Uh, there are clinical trials ongoing right now that are focused on not simply stabilizing the abnormal protein, but eliminating it completely. New treatment options currently under development may give ATTR patients and their families hope for the future. I do have to get a hold of your sister, and yeah. I hope things are going okay. We imagine a world where patients with ATTR are living full, healthy, high-quality lives. But it's important for patients to get involved. Diagnosis is critical, so we ask patients to get heavily involved in their diagnosis and bring others, if they, in fact, do get diagnosed with TTR-mediated amyloidosis, in because it is a dominant autosomal inherited disease. Dylan Duncan continues to perform his favorite hobbies, such as painting. He also enjoys hanging with his group of supportive friends. And, of course, he continues to play his guitar. There's one particular song that you wrote called Hello, Amy. Tell us about that song. Amy is short for amyloidosis, and so what I did is I actually wanted to just personify it um, and make it almost sound like, like it's a girl that you want out of your life, like an ex-girlfriend or, or something like that, you know? Hello, Amy, I didn't expect you here this soon. You're not due for quite a while. Are you still hopeful about your condition and ultimately yourself and your life? Yes, very much so. Um, there are moments when I get really, really scared, um, especially since symptoms are starting to kind of show themselves, and and it's it's hard, it's hard not to think negatively sometimes. Just seeing what happened with, with our with our mother, and um, but absolutely, I mean, there are so many new advances that weren't happening around the time that my mom was, or, or if or if they were, at least they weren't, you know being so widely explored, and, and it's, it's, very, um, it's very encouraging and very hopeful. His music takes on new meaning. Gone are the Hello Amy lyrics. Today, he sings about... I could offer you my ears and they are open wide for you a special thank you to Dylan for sharing this personal story with us this morning, and thanks to everyone for sharing this information on ATTR. For more information on the free third-party screening program, go to ttrscreen.com or call toll-free 1-855-338-3721. Thanks so much for starting your morning right here with us. Our Be The Change series continues to bring you stories that are making a difference on a big or small scale, and we hope you are affecting change in your community. Absolutely. Always more on our website, thebalancingact.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter, and until next time, remember, find your balance. So long, everybody.